They are like seriously mad people. And this is not even an exaggeration. Completely insane people. You understand? They will come here and tell you that, why, why, how come you are not seeing anything good about Nigeria? Why is it that every time you are not seeing anything good about Nigeria? Then when you ask them to show you that good thing, they will start fighting you. Then, when they start crying, hey, being power, oh, ah, we are hungry, oh, which kind of life be this? Oh, good kitty, flung, oh, so when i now say check boss in you a being power this solely blue kusu now am i going am i going so are you are you are you happy that people are suffering eh are you are you are you trying to to mock them are you trying to laugh at us eh are you trying to make our problem eh you are trying to make our problem eh, eh, a laughing thing as a olori bruku you get problem me ah i thought there are good things now eh so instead of you to begin to show us those good things you want to gaslight us mo we can't get emotion for you ogun pai da no iku pai so when you see them here do not waste your energy. They are also receiving therapy because they have some, they need somebody to blame for their unfortunate existence and their choices in life. You know, life is very, very uh, tricky. Eh? Before, before I understand what it means by choice, but by actions, you get consequences. So I'm serious. So. May I break them down for you? Okay. I was uh, a little boy when my own uh, grandfather of blessed memory told me that wa come. Every time I come back from Lagos, they will be reporting you to me. All of your bad behavior, disobedience, and all of that stuff. And to be honest, ladies and gentlemen, I wasn't an easy boy growing up. Somehow, so much, I've always been like that. Share you get. But you know, when you begin to grow older, you begin to understand that in this life, eh, no be everything. Get it the resolve, kind of. So my grandfather, whenever he came back then, uh, he now called me and he said, listen, come, how old are you? I remember, I think I was about 14 or 13. I can't remember. So I was a teenager. And he said, uh, in this life, you are getting to that age that you will understand that as you lay your bed, so you will lie on it. Actions have consequences. And indeed, in life, choices that we make, actions that we make, you know, choices that we make, eh, sort of a pushes for the actions that we take. And for example, if you are if you have if you have someone who is kind of sponsoring your education and you just decided to drop out and you're not doing it anymore because you want to do something, you must be very sure that you will be responsible for that decision, that action. Nobody else would. Do you understand? It simply means that if you choose something and you believe that no, I'm not doing this, I'm doing that, whatever happens, you will be responsible for it, good or bad. You may get support, you may not, but you will know that once you make a decision. And that's the same thing about life generally. People have made decisions that have 
destroy them. Great men, hmm? great women, they have made wrong life choices, life partners. A lot of people have made, you know, they've, they've made choice of partners that have changed and derailed them and destroyed them and never would they ever reach their potentials in life until they die. Choice, action. Same thing, called, same thing with uh, politics and governance. You must understand that there is no saving grace. There's nothing like blaming other people. Okay? And it's a two-way thing. But the first one, those of you who don't understand very well, that you might think you might be spared from the, uh, what do you call it, from the, from the pang of bad governance because you support them. No, you are stupid to believe that. You will not be spared. And for those who opened their eyes and allowed that, I mean, and allowed that to happen, either by pretending that they are on the fence, sitting on the fence because they don't want to be seen this or that, but eventually they allow the aberration to happen. Everybody played a role. You know, you remember when we said that, uh, oh yeah, they shouldn't have allowed them to announce your election results because if you had actually shut the entire the country down that time, you probably won't be experiencing this today. And seriously, that also can be blamed on, I mean, blamed on those who felt like you should do it. No, you should do it. No, 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 you should do it. Why me? Why not you? Until nobody did. Actions and inactions have consequences. It is not just what you do that you get consequences for, including what you refuse to do or you ignore to do or you completely abandoned doing everything every action inaction all of them have consequences and i knew this when i was just a little boy as a teenager how dare you who claim to be uh in your 30s in your 20s in your 30s in your 40s in your 50s think somebody else should be blamed for your life choices, your life actions and inactions, eh? your I don't careism, or all, all, of, all of that. I better pass my neighbor. If it is not happening, if it hasn't happened to me, then maybe it's not happening. It's been exaggerated. At least I haven't been kidnapped. Therefore, maybe this kidnapping is self now exaggeration. You have no idea what this is, do you? Eh? Everybody will be responsible for your action. I will be responsible for my actions. Do you understand? An aberration took place. Lives, millions of lives have been thrown into turmoil. Uncertain, unsure, unsafe. Yeah? And do you really think pointing fingers at those who choose not to keep quiet? People like myself, is enough for us to feel bad? We already felt bad. We already felt so bad for you. We are beyond feeling bad. We are angry that every day that passes, lives are going to continue to be lost. Destinies are going to be destroyed. That future that you want to feature in, Baba, they are not even allowing you to be part of it, those who are drafting it. How is that going? So keeping quiet is as good as being dead. Trying to keep people quiet is not different from trying to make people suffer what you are suffering. In silence, by praying. <laughs> I don't think so. But let's move forward a bit. Uh, here is uh, the prime, uh, sorry, uh, Premium Times report on the Nigerian border. I want you to see this and then I will show you something after. As the Nigerian government grapples with revenue challenges, custom officials rake in billions for themselves while sabotaging the government's policies they were supposed to protect. At least 40 NCS personnel 
most of them in the service's highest hierarchy, have been indicted in a robust EFCC investigation into the proceeds of bribes paid to custom officials by smugglers importing and exporting contraband goods through the Nigerian borders. At least seven of these officials were detained by the EFCC for these late last year, with some of them spending the festive period in detention when proceeds of bribes allegedly from smugglers totaling over 12 billion naira were traced to them. Some of these officials amassed the largest tranche of these bribes from smugglers last year after the directives to close the Nigerian-Niger border by the Nigerian government as part of ECOWAS sanctions against the military junta that deposed Nigerian President Mohamed Bazoum. The smugglers pay bribes directly or through agents designated accounts of the Nigerian Customs Service officials. Of the seven identified officers worked in Zombie, while one officer, to whom more than 80% of the 12 billion naira was traced to, works in Zone C, Port Harcourt. One of the arrested officers, the NCS area controller Zombi Kaduna, Ibrahim Jalo, was found with $31,200 and 500,000 naira in cash when arrested. But the EFCC also traced suspected proceeds of bribes from smugglers totaling 1.1 billion naira to Mr. Jalo. It was also revealed that the officer promptly refunded 250 million naira with a promise to refund the balance. The EFCC also traced 126 million naira to Mr. Jalo's personal assistant, Umar Tafaraki. He has also refunded 12 million naira. Another officer involved in this saga is Kayodi Koladi, the Controller Federal Operations Unit. Zone C, Port Harcourt. The anti graft agency traced 9.5 billion naira suspected to be bribes from smugglers to him, all of which he was said to have received personally and through proxies between 2015 and 2023. He has refunded 50 million naira and committed to refund 800 million naira within a short period. Another indicted officer, Nurdin Musa, is the controller of enforcement, Kaduna Zone. The EFCC traced 950 million naira to him. The anti graft agency has recovered 583 million naira from him after he spent days in detention. He has also promised to refund the rest. Meanwhile, Hamisu Ibrahim, the officer in charge of operations, Zone B Kaduna, was suspected to have garnered 120 million naira in bribes from smugglers between 2019 and 2023. As of January, he has refunded 30 million naira and promised to refund the rest. Madugu Sali and Mohamed Rabiu were suspected to have received 85 million naira and 84 million naira respectively from smugglers. Mr. Sali has refunded 13.5 million naira and promised to refund the rest. Mr. Raibu, the officer in charge of patrol on the Aganga Road, Jibia Road, refunded 50 million naira to the anti graft agency. Thank you very much, uh, Premium Times. So the credit, uh, you know, to that video or for that video goes to them. It was an incredible uh, sort of uh, uh, compilation. Initially, they released uh, the details of uh, all the looting. Did you see all those money? Now the people with the guide Nigerian uh, customs with that Nigerian custom officials, senior senior officials, so thieves. No wonder. People like this uh, local terrorist. Eh, called IBD Dende, eh, who was say, who was caught uh, beating the Nigerian custom officials in Ogun State for for confiscating his uh, small good uh, contraband to Nigeria. The video went viral, and 
a lot of people said, listen, there's nothing anybody can do to him. Okay? He's a Tifnumbu's person. And as Tifnumbu's person, he's untouchable. In fact, he now goes about with a diplomatic passport. Many criminals that you know, thugs, drug dealers, money launderers, human traffickers. Do you understand? Some of them are now walking about with Nigerian diplomatic passports. You have no idea yet. Okay? Now, you see that IBD Dende eh, is also a philanthropist, a criminal that is so connected that when the video went viral, Nigeria media, Gota media, Nigeria Business Day, God damn it, man. They actually published uh, this to start laundering his image. Do you know what they did? May I tell you? Maybe everybody know that it was a Fisayo Shoyombo of the Foundation for uh, Investigative Journalism. Fisayo. That was the guy that did the undercover investigation to reveal how smugglers are so powerful in Nigeria, in the South, in the North. But this time around in the South, an IB, IBD, Dende's name came up. This guy is so connected that he told these people that the current uh, Comptroller General of the Nigerian Custom, he influenced how, she be, uh, how that person became uh, the Comptroller General. Yes. The police IG of Nigeria, they are friends, they are party like that, from the same area, Ogun State, Yewa. This guy is a philanthropist that gives money like, you know, I don't think there's any musician that hasn't really praised him. He's a total, like, when you say underworld, if you tell you saying go kill you, Baba, you are gone, you are dead. Run, no. Oh. Nigerian media started doing a human job. You know what they did? They now said, this investigation of exposing Dende, beating up custom official. A custom officer, Nigerian custom officer. A smuggler was beating a custom officer in uniform with guns, beating him and told him that I'll make sure that I deal with you. Threatening to kill him. The video made it viral everywhere. Nigeria media welcomed a, a what do you call it? They welcomed somebody to come and start, you know, twisting it. You know what they said? They said, the people after Dende, they are the people who don't like Tifnumbu because Dende, eh, the, the smuggler, is connected to Tifnumbu. He's the Tifnumbu's friend. You remember Tifnumbu took him to Dubai? Yeah, that climate change. The guy has diplomatic passports. Yeah. Yeah, Tifnumbu took, he took him there. Now, this, this writer in this, in this article here, the writer here said that the people after Dende in that place, that arrow, eh, the, the writer said, the people after Dende are the people who lost election from a certain region. He's talking about uh, the Igbos. They want to turn this investigative journalist uh, report to Igbos versus Yoruba. And for those who don't like Tifnumbu, not because this guy, a smuggler, beat up a custom officer on camera. And Nigeria media published that. Gotha media. So that everybody who says, ah, they are now after Dende. What is wrong with all these people? Eh? You these people, eh? Igbo people. Igbo people, you are after Dende. Why are you always after the Yoruba? Eh, Jotori Olomo. Eh, Jo, I beg you now. Me, I'm a Yoruba man, no. A red blooded, I've been a blue, blue blooded lady, Macbe. Full blooded Yoruba man. It's a boo to be precise. And people like these criminals do not represent me. And there are millions like me eh, that actually loathe these people. Millions like myself that would love to see these rogues meet their Waterloo. I mean, justice. Do you understand? But because our society, like Nigeria, what Nigeria is today, money rules. People don't care 
how many people you kill just to be able to buy a bottle of beer for people. They don't care. All they care is the color of the money you have to give to them. They will tell you, eh, we know that he's a criminal, but he's a, he's a very nice person. Why are you all people who just wanted to, to destroy people? Eh? Why do you want to destroy people? He's, he's a good person, but he's a criminal. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Do you know how many people he's helping? Did he kill anybody? Did you see him kill anybody? Oh, yeah, he's killed people. They've killed people that came across him or tried to, by any chance, challenge him. Are you there? Are you there? Ah, I'm on Yoruba. Ah, I see Yoruba to the alone Yoruba, not there. We have people like, we have a lot of Bruku like that in Yoruba land. Of course we do. But they do not represent the majority of us if you actually know the Yorubas very well. If your own bias and prejudice towards the Yorubas has not really gone around you mad, codedly. That anything, Yoruba, eh? Is a no no. So I'm not here to, to pacify you, okay? I'm not pacifying you. I'm just trying to let you know that. There are Yorubas like myself that would love to see these criminals eh, actually face justice, including Tifnumbu. But because Yoruba is part of Nigeria now, therefore, they can enjoy the rotten system that actually empower people like them and do not blame the Yorubas for it. I promise you. If I see you one on one, I'll slap you. You actually blame the Yoruba for thugs and criminals like this. Do you know that most of their victims are Yorubas? Do you know that? When you see the Igbo criminals, go and look at their victims. Eh? Majority of their victims will be Igbos. Yes. Go and look at the Fulani criminals. Go and look at the Kanuri criminals, the Northern criminals, the Jihadist criminals. When you look at the victims, they are their people. Look at the Yoruba criminals. And then you realize that we are their victims too. Don't let me slap you by thinking that uh, these people represent me. I'm serious. Oh. I slap you like that and I say, shut up your mouth and get some education. Of course, we have people that will say, people are trying to bring him down. Is he the only person? Is he kineko kineko? You know what I mean? But these people bring shame. But since the system welcomed them, Baba, Minister on that boy, on that Tifnumbu, in all of this country, Kenika, Kenika, what's going to happen to Dende? Nothing, Shingbai. Today, now all of them, they, 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 they greet them. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Now, one of your ministers be this one. This one, Ishia Kunle Salako. Now, your minister, minister for, minister of state for environmental, Nigerian minister, congratulating a, a, a smuggler. Happy birthday, my leader. Eh? Go and read what they, they write about him. Humanity. See, you and appreciate your impactful philanthropy to humanity, to which I am a living witness. Now, Minister for Nigeria, be that to Tifnumbu's minister. Here is another one. This one, uh, Senator. This one is planning to be the next governor. Yayi. Okay. This one wants to be the governor of Lagos State. After being the senator, I'm a senator in Lagos. See that one too. Go and read it. No doubt you have made an indelible mark as a frontline businessman in hospitality industry, as well as mining sector. Mining. <laughs> so even see him with billions of, uh, if you see him with uh, hundreds of millions of dollars, there is, a way, there is a senator that can tell you that I be then days into mining. Eh? Within the mine, hospitality and mining, your employment generation through industry he hired young people to be criminals, to be smugglers, to be thugs, land grabbers, political washings, political criminals. Baba, see, more will know the deceiver says, okay? But those of us who have actually uh, interacted with these criminals one-on-one, -on -one, if you go around them, the only people you see around them are criminals. Hardened, hardened looking criminals. Courtists, people who actually have guns to harm people. These are guys, that, this is what makes them stronger. This is what makes them so powerful. They feel so invincible. Then you will now see police carrying guns around them and all of that stuff. They are like uh, the state, non-state actors, but are, that are also state actors. 
this is somebody who can have you killed. You are lucky if he has you arrested. Yes. If you expose anything about him, he can have the police IG call for your arrest. Inspector General of Police of the entire Nigeria. He will just send him a text that they should look for you. They will use the entire resources of Nigeria police to track you down for a smuggler, for an interborder, interborder smuggler. That's Nigeria, I'm just saying, you know. And they said, people, where they expose them, they are the Igbo people. That's how they also try to put that in the mind of the people, their readers, the Gota media in Nigeria. Just so you know. But in case if you don't understand, smugglers are not good people. <laughs> Make I explain that one to you. Mm -hmm. We know say Nigeria, Nigeria don't spoil. See, Nigeria the budget. But people who actually made Nigeria a Nigeria budget, one of them is this your philanthropic uh, IBD Dende. He's still gonna see, he's gonna still meet his justice, so by the way. I strongly believe that. But let me tell you how they are all de destroying your lives. Number one, smugglers don't pay custom revenues. They don't pay anything to government, which means government doesn't make any money from them bringing anything to Nigeria. Because government has no right to check them and they are smugglers. That means whatever they are bringing into Nigeria, you don't know them and your government doesn't know what they are bringing in. They may tell you they are bringing bag of rice. Meanwhile, they are actually bringing bullets, guns, that will end up in the hands of different terrorists, different, uh, what do you call it, different criminals who are also going to use those weapons to terrorize your lives. Do you understand? That's one, another thing for, from smugglers. If they bring in food, there is nobody to sanction and say this food is good for consumption. Nobody to check. No standard, no nothing. It's just going to move from, from their container straight to your bedroom, to your homes, since you begin to kind of buy from everywhere, right? So nobody can guarantee what you are consuming is going to help you or is going to kill you. I know say poverty can make you feel like, you know, matter, I know they kill anybody. I, I understand. Also, because of this, the damages they do to your country eh, and to you watching me right now, a lot of you have lost your loved ones to different fake drugs, fake this, fake that. Who brings those fake drugs into Nigeria? Smugglers. Yes. Who bring those, uh, you know, dangerous uh, things that some of you kind of come across and you are wondering, how did, you how did we get this? Smugglers. And it is not only from the southern Nigeria smugglers are. You have no idea how many smuggling routes are things getting into Nigeria, a majority of them, they are not to help you reduce price. Majority of them are to kill you. Just so you know. And that's how they make their money. It is called blood money. Okay? A smuggler needs legitimacy. So when he makes that money from that blood money, he can, build a, he can actually build an hotel. Or you know, start a transportation business. And all of you will say, ah, he has been employing people. People are working for him. But to keep that operation going, it's going to be blood for blood. And most of the time, because of these terrorist smugglers, a lot of you have lost your innocent lives, your children, your loved ones, to the stray bullet of the Nigerian custom who claim to be chasing smugglers. I mean, we have, we have seen a lot. So when you see any smuggler giving you money, if you are a relative of, of any smuggler, you are contributing to the killings and the death of the people for every penny that you are benefiting from that uh, bloody trade. So if you see anybody, if they tell you they are generous, they are this, they are that, they are just being generous to you because your death will come quick and you won't see it coming. I mean, society that normalizes all criminality for goodness sake. Do you, don't you think you'll be the victims of it? That is why you are watching my Egon's Diary Political. For you to be able to understand your, uh, your, what do you call, your, your, your involvement 
or your pretend, I mean, your denier of what is going on around you. Yeah, that's why you are watching this broadcast. I won't drink uh, some uh, warm tea. I found this video where uh, an official of the Lagos state government was telling people who are being uh, sent out of uh, their, their scotters, by the way, and they are being told to move. And I just feel like I should share that with you. Because the reality of today, it is, it's like the, the wind of the shege is blowing. It's blowing so, so strangely these days. And it's like every minute too, right? Watch this, I'll come back. <laughs> And I mean nobody. We don't try them for the other side. We don't want anybody here. Today is Sunday. By Thursday midnight. You can come back here by 12 midnight. That's all this from now. We were enforced. That means we go remove all the shelters, everything is going to And then, we tell us what you need to do. This is not family. It is straight like this. And we can't continue to hold our hands and pretend this idea. People cannot be here and we can't account for them at all. So, Thursday midnight. If we can't come back, because of the day insistence, we will do it in government. We will remove them. So, everybody will need to, to move, and they continue to sort of, uh, you know, uh, displace uh, people. People continue to move further and further to other places. It's like they will send them away from here and then they'll move to another one. They will send, they will come there and demolish them again. In another two years, they're already in another place. Because in those places, as it is in Lagos, right, there are people who will say, oh, yeah, all of you come here. I am the landlord of this area. If you want to put up your shanty here, your shop, eh? now, 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 now 10,000 10, monthly. So before you know it, everybody begin to put things up. Now we'll be the landlord of the area. So whenever they feel like, uh, oh, we need to send them away again. Oh, I don't see them build houses 
Lagos should be building houses like, uh, you know, high-rise houses uh, where uh, a lot of people who are probably homeless and all of that today, like, they could have a place to cheap houses like that for everybody. So somebody said that, uh, I don't know if you actually meant that in a good way or another way, I don't understand though. So somebody says something about this because I mentioned that Abia and somebody in the comments said, uh, all of the all of uh, the money spent in Abia is not more than 20 billion Naira. And then, uh, but he can continue his uh, social media governance. So does that mean that uh, everything where we they hear about Alex Oti in a fake, Abi? I didn't get your message. I don't know if that's a conversation that is going on in between everybody there, right? But I just caught, and I just used my side eye to, to catch that. And I was like, what's that person saying? Yeah. Anyway, maybe if I get your answer, I can possibly say more. All right. But just so you know, I don't know where that is. So, because I also know that, uh, apart from the fact that it's on, uh, you know, it's, a, it's actually like a statement of fact that despite Nigeria starting a democracy since 1999, eh, 24 years, PDP who have been ruling the state, we all know what they turned the place into, like so many other places like that. So when they are talking about uh, places where roads are being constructed, all right, or uh, salaries are being paid and they are not celebrating salary payments, uh, it will be, you know, it won't be a beer. Do you understand? Sometimes some people will tell you that Oji Uzo or Kalu, this or that, these are PDP boys. These are Hallelujah boys. SPV boys. And from what I have also observed is that there are some set of people that every time you, you see anything coming from that place, Abia, and they say, Alex sorted this, Alex sorted that, that, that. You still see some people that they will say, uh, we could not deceive herself. No be Abia with it. We will the Abia here. We don't see electricity. All of now, we do the social media. Now, social media, that they pay all of you influencers. So I would actually really need to understand what that means because what I have figured out is that there are so many uh, PDP boys that felt like Alex Sotti is just, uh, just going to be an accident that will never happen again. There are some of them who simply are like, about if we have the way they share 500 naira to new mothers, if you, if you give birth there in, Anam I mean, sorry, in Abia, if we have will give your, your wife maternity support. Person where they share kerosene few days to, I mean, sorry, few months to election as a project. And they took pictures. Person where then they beg, they may complete one single flyover, a bridge in the entire Abia state. That was questioning the person. They said, when are you going to finish the bridge? And the governor was telling the person on the live radio, what bridge? Did you ask me to build bridge? Am I not the one who just felt like we needed bridge? Am I not the one who is building the bridge? Are you the one building the bridge? See the person who is asking about bridge. He may not even have a cow. Somebody who doesn't have a car is asking for bridge. On a live radio, I have the video then. I can look for it and show you. So when you see them in Abba, eh, celebrating, even if not just a five-kilometer road, even if not just township road, a lot of you elsewhere, eh, I mean, I'm from Ogun State, as bad as it is. We have, you know, we have one of the worst roads in Nigeria, but I've seen new roads a few times. I've seen them, you know, even though if the rain go wash them off in the next few days. At least I've seen black tarred road. Where we say, ah, new road. Go back there. You see so many craters. Yeah. I'm talking about portals that can take your entire truck. Yeah. But in Abia State, that day, everything was more or less like a, the state of the father of the son and then uh, of the mother. I'm serious. So if you see them celebrating, even not, even if the market they complete, and you see them come on social media and celebrate it, now people will make sure say that place didn't see development for 24 years. Who felt like if nobody saw this noise of uh, obedience, who is Alex Sotti? My friend, 
the next time it will never happen again. We we'll make sure that say, 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 because they are those ones who have probably lost out today. So if you are one of them who is saying that it's a social media thing, can $800 million investment in electricity a social media thing? That should be more than $20 billion anyway. I'm just saying, you know, because this is my when I've told you. I said, if you listen to my song very well, right? My song is like a Toba Shere, my Mawi. Bosi tun shere, maye gun ma wi. Ani e sun raki, maye gun ti de. If you do it well, I will say. If you don't do it well, I will say. The most important thing is that if you have a chance to say, I want to do something, do what you say you will do. And nobody will have to lie against you. Do you get that? So if you are in Aba, analyze say electricity day in Yimba City. I beg, tell us. We want to know. Now you did there. No, they tell me, say, <laughs> me, I spoke, I spoke to my, my brother in Aba yesterday. He said all the news now nonsense, Jerry, all now fake news. So you know the Aba? You know the any of the nine local government area? Now your brother tell you. Oh, now your friend. Oh, your supplier. Oh, you are there last night, but you are no longer there when we ask you to take pictures or make video. I'm not here to kind of make you feel too uh, sad anyway. So we'll move on. They caught one of them too that they believe is, uh, I'm sorry if you don't understand this, uh, what he's saying, okay? I'll come back and tell you. There's someone I want to show you. But today, this man cracked me up. Oh. Anybody will understand Yoruba should help me interpret what this man says. In fact, I want you to tell everyone what this guy says. In English, those of you who understand Yoruba, I want to read some of your meaning. It is still about the shege going on in that contraption. That's a driver, hard working man, somebody who has a job, a driver. He's almost into tears. He said, he's working and working and working. He has nothing to show for it. He's buying a liter of petrol for 680 naira, 700 naira per liter. He will drive that, uh, that bus, that public transport, right? He will drive it all day. His own block holes. He's crapples, eh? He's corrupt. That's why he says he's corrupt. He's a block holes, right? We'll begin the, the bomb, the fire, that they will have to need to begin to. It said it will have to come out like, you know, it will sit on the hot coroque. And he will have to begin to blow, to blow his uh, blockers every evening. And at the end of the day, he can't even feed his family. And he can't pay the school fees of his children. That's the person with the worker. You day on social media, they do Bambi Allah with your fake account. Or you are using your real account to say, if Numbu will do it, yes. You don't get a job. You don't get anything. You are looking up to people where they check you and say, ah, my boy, how are you doing now? How far is everything? A long time. Baoni, show up. Anyway, well, no, you take this one. Take and do, oh, my boy. People where they give you money. People where they help you. Have you not noticed that some of them are already using style, style, turn to Olushi now? Eh? Uh, let, me, let me explain that. It's this guy. Uh, it was on Twitter today. I think, was it today or yesterday? So this young person, people were talking about people. Let me say a quick uh, thank you to Uduak. Uduak, thank you. Our people don't have the willpower to govern effectively. To cover all this mess, best approach is to protect at foreign embassies and see travel ban on our corrupt politicians and their families. 
you know, that's where the, uh, the collusion of the Western world is also evident, okay? These people will never place any uh, economic sanction on any Nigerian official. Trust me, because they are all business associates. You get that now. So that's why I don't really fancy calling on them. Who duck? That's a very good one. Thanks uh, there for your super chat, okay? I appreciate that. So, uh, what was I even saying earlier? Eh? Concerning people who believes that they could hide behind some false identity on social media so that uh, they can continue to defend the APC, and at the same time, continue to spread all of uh, the fascism and hatred that is associated with them, right? Or have you not noticed that some of uh, those that used to help you, some of them are also becoming broke now, poor. So let me now tell you that story I wanted to tell you. So it was this guy on social media, and it was like, he was calling out someone. And how did he do it? He said, my problem with people, this is how I think he put it. So it was pretty much like, my, his problem with people was that people were, people were judging people because they supported Tifnumbu. He now said, there is this guy who used to give me job. Very, very steady, steady. And it was, it was really, really helpful. But the moment he noticed that I supported Tifnumbu and I voted for Tifnumbu, this guy just stopped giving me job. He just stopped. Like, he just, he just started acting funny to me. Ah, 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 ah. We should only blue could be this. We get the audacity to come on social media and say he supported Tifnumbu and somebody cut relationship with them. Like they, they cut off uh, their relationship because he supported Tifnumbu. And you know what he said? He said, well, but, but I thank God that I am not begging anybody for food now. But now let us, uh, let us kind of Take a look at that. Okay. So, 